dance space. Then. Caminos en el cielo, misterios en el mar y las sombras del desvelo que me vienen a sediar. Si preces que se me se. on the show till the end, man. You gotta come back later. Please, take me with you. I'm going up to Atlin. It's by the Yukon. I've never been up to the Yukon. Is it cold there? I'll grab a coat. Y you should wear your orange hoodie. I love you in orange. It looks good on you. <laughs> Wait. Okay, it's 11 p.m. where I am right now. I'm in Atlin, BC, right up on the border of the Yukon. The sun doesn't go down here. This is what it looks like kind of all night. It's kind of bizarre to get your head around. <laughs> Right now we're gonna go meet a guy named Jamie who's gonna take us to see something incredibly spectacular. Oh, that's a pretty serious garage door. So Jamie, introduce yourself. Who are you? Jamie Tate. And I live you? in Atlin, BC, if you've never seen it. <laughs> How long have you lived here? Off and on for 35 years. And you fly that, that thick. Have a name? Llewellyn Glacier. And apparently it's two kilometers thick. Yeah, the, well the thickest piece between here and Juneau, Alaska is over 6,000 feet thick. So that's over two kilometers. And how, and it's how long? It, uh, Glacier basically starts in the Prince Rupert area and goes all the way up through the coastline to almost Anchorage, Alaska. So probably a thousand kilometers long anyway. 
So a piece of ice that's a thousand kilometers long and two kilometers thick. And a hundred thousand years old. It's from the last ice age. in the most incredible place I've ever been in my life, hands down. Hands down. This is a glacier term, but it's called a yuckalup. This lake actually takes a year to form, and it um, will be a thousand feet deep and three miles long when it's full, and it takes a year to fill it. It'll empty in three days, and uh, we call it Lake No Lake. So one day it's a lake, and the next day it's not. You were saying yesterday this was underwater? This where we're standing, see how wet the ground is? Yeah. It, it was probably the river was over here. That river will change direction depending on what ice falls into it. And there's a big chunk over there. You can see the oh, base falling just away fell. underneath it. Eventually that piece will fall in the river, plug the river, and the river will change channels. You know, it's probably the size of a thousand square foot home. So it's pretty wild. It's probably one of the craziest spots on the planet I've ever seen. It does it every year. All, this year it happened on July 1st, Canada Day. This is the most spectacular thing I've ever seen in my life. It's just... I'm amazed by the sounds. Yeah, like the rocks and the ice rolling down the river. This... And the constant erosion on the shore. There's a huge amount of, of uh, energy in the water. It's unbelievable. And there's not much water there. <laughs> so we're literally... We're, we're in the middle of nowhere on top of the world. And it, let's say I, a person got left here. Let's say I was here. Accidentally, you left me here. Accidentally, on purpose. Yeah. Maybe? Yes. <laughs> do you think I? Do you think I could survive? No. I think uh, you'd survive for a few days. You know, you'd uh, first of all, you'd have to get yourself to higher ground to get out of this valley because you'd freeze to death down here. And then you'd be wet up in the trees, and you know, hypothermia would set in, and you'd have to find yourself a baby goat to for start ripping apart for lunch because you wouldn't make a week later. To, Does that have uh, to be a baby? Well, you won't get the big ones. I guarantee you that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'd make it, Danny. Really don't. <laughs> we should get going. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! I've always wanted to be on this show since you first started airing it. I've watched every episode. I'm a huge fan and I'm kind of geeking out. I just want to say, for the record, I'm geeking out. Not only do I love you, but I love your van. Ladies and gentlemen, on the show today, we have the one and only Steve Poltz. The most uh, impressive, hardworking, bizarre, wonderful, 
a hilarious man full of stories. This man met Elvis. This man, oh, you have the best stories, the best adventures of anyone I know. And so let's drive around and tell us about them. First of all, so Since you I shook Elvis's hand, if you shake my hand right now, it's like you shook his hand due to the debt transfer act of 1969. <laughs> Everybody loves the space van. Everyone loves the space it's van. It's like you're in your own personal parade daily. And then are there others who actively hate it? And they're mad that you're just the kind of guy that would buy this? Yeah, they're, so, they're, they're, I do get dirty looks. That's great. That's art. Art should always be something where you can, some people love you and some people hate you. Otherwise, what are you doing? Right. It's gotta be a lightning rod, man. It's gotta be something where people go, I hate that All or right. I love it. And yeah. who cares about the haters? Haters gonna hate. But what it is is you want the people who are gonna truly love you. And those are the people that will be with you. Like people who are in a dance space fan like me, they will go with you through thick and thin. The bad seasons, the great seasons. The bad seasons. The seasons where Fonzie water skis and jumps a shark. When people play like 10 I, minute songs. Oh, could you imagine if you had a guest that would do a 10 minute song? It's like, dude, three minutes, don't bore us, get to the chorus. <laughs> right? So listen, you were born in Halifax, but then went to San Diego. Because well, there's some great story about your dad fell on the ice and then you moved. We were snowed in and we were Haligonians and I was just a very, very little tyke. And my dad slipped and fell on the snow. We were snowed in and he got so mad. He had just gotten out of the RCAF and he said, we're moving. And he found the warmest place he could think of and it was Southern California and we <laughs> moved to the Pasadena, California and then Palm Springs. Wow, and then the adventures began and you wrote lots of songs with the singer Jewel? Yes, All I the wrote big hits. many songs with Jewel. We fell in love and wrote songs and went to Mexico and wrote a huge hit called You Were Meant For Me. And that afforded me to finance Dan's face band. <laughs> I'm the secret, I'm the angel investor. Steve Fultz. <laughs> That'd be cool if I really was an investor in Dan's face band. Show. Well, well, You're gonna get a huge sponsorship. You're People don't to... even know. Oh, you know what? Enjoy yourself. Oh yeah, it's later than you think. Look at this lady. She's slow. She's just taking her time. She's trying so She's hard. She's not. Bless her heart. She's just walking and walking. Um, so she wasn't impressed by the space van. Not at all. Dude, one of my favorite stories you ever told was about playing the the, the baseball game and the jet fighters. What was that? Tell that one. Oh my gosh, I was in South Dakota. I was doing the soundtrack to this film called Running Wild, The Life of Dayton, Ohio. It's about an 88 year old cowboy. Does this bug you when you're driving? What about that? <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. And uh, the guy, the guy, whoa! The San Francisco Giants ask me, this is the San Francisco Giants. And they go, would you like to do the national anthem? I was like, yes, I'd love to. So they fly me out and they let me do the national anthem. So Barry Zito's pitching that day, it was Memorial Day, the Giants were playing the Arizona Diamondbacks and he throws the ball right at my head and he goes, don't blow it, Poltsy, like a schoolyard bully. And then Bruce Bochy, the manager of the Giants comes up and I'd owed him $862 because I broke his mini bar in his hotel room one night. <laughs> I pried it open and threw all the bottles of liquor into the wall back when I used to drink. And, I, and then Bochy how long, comes How up, long have you not drank? Ten and a half years. Good, nice connection. <laughs> what about you? Oh, I don't drink either. I do, but I'm a Vulcan. <laughs> um, so, he goes, Bochy says, Hey, Pulsey, you owe me $862 for breaking my mini bar. I got the mini bar blues. May, write me a song. And he says, when you do the national anthem, don't do it too long. We hate to sit through a long anthem. So, I go to sing the anthem and the guy from the Air Force says, listen, when you get to the part of the song that says, for the land of the free and the home of the brave, for the land of the free and the home of the brave, you probably don't know that because you're a Canadian. I knew But uh, I knew yeah, that. maybe you've heard of our little country, America. <laughs> yeah, right? Powerful. So, he's like, can you? You're from Halifax. Oh, oh yeah, wait. You fucking door. <laughs> So he goes, <laughs> he goes, <laughs> so the guy says to me, when you get to the part that says, for the land of the free and the home of the brave, if the jets aren't there, you need to extend the song. And I go, like, what do you mean extend the song? I don't know any extroverts. That guy's so mad at you. Yeah, look at him. Ah. 
And uh, so he goes, uh, I said, what do you mean extend the song? I don't know. What do you want me to write an extra verse? He goes, just extend the song. And, and I go, but you guys are the Air Force. You can't be late. So I get to the part of the song. I goes, for the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I'm looking up and there's no jets. And the guy goes, extend it, extend it. 50,000 people sold out Memorial Day. They take this stuff seriously. So I don't know what to do. So I start hot dogging on the thing. I don't know. I'm playing the riff of uh, the Star Spangled Banner. in the space fan but it was good oh. well we first moved to the USA all the way from Canada we drove across the continent from Nova Scotia to Pasadena. My sister and me and my mom and dad, from the cold to the sunny south. There were palm trees growing and it was not snowing and I never did shut my mouth. Well, we drove on over to the courthouse in downtown Los Angeles. Put our hands on a Bible and we swore as a family that we were not communist. When we drove away, I started to cry. They said, what's wrong, son? Are you sick? I said, I don't want to be an American. I want to be a Catholic. We talked. Hollywood and baseball in the car The voice of Vin Scully Oh man, it would travel really far And there's an eerie spiderweb shadow crawling into Chavez Ravine Sandy Koufax walks out to the mound Top of the ninth inning and he's up to his hips and alligators well, I made my first communion at St. Rita's Catholic Church. There was incense choking and a priest was smoking. There was a choir up in the perch. My face got red and my stomach felt bad. They said, if you're gonna get sick, use a cup. Well, I thought by the time it was my turn for communion, Jesus would be all eaten up. We talk. Hollywood and baseball in the car the voice of Harry Carey man it would travel really far Harry Carey he was the voice of the Chicago Cubs he's the only announcer I know who was let go by his team for sleeping with the owner's wife he was the announcer of the St. Louis Cardinals and he slept with Augie Bush's wife, which is something you should never do if you want to be the announcer of that team. So he went to Chicago and he was legendary there and he would get drunk and he could never pronounce the players from the Dominican Republic name, any Hispanic players. So say Davey Concepcion was coming for the Cincinnati Reds, he'd say, Come up, little I think. Dino Concicolone. Get your old style beer here, holy cow. Well, my allergies were bad, so we moved to the desert to a city called Palm Springs. We trick-or-treated at Liberace's house. Each finger had a diamond. 
We met Elvis Presley in the middle of the summer And he hugged my sister for far too long Oh well, I felt kind of weird But I would have pimped her out just to hear him sing a song I'll never forget it it was probably 120 degrees and we got a call from our neighbor who was the manager of the Palm Springs Airport. He said, Steve, Kath, Kath was my older sister. He said, would you guys like to meet Elvis Presley? He'll be landing in a private plane today at 3 p.m. And you guys can meet him if you'd like. Holy jeepers, yes, Mr. Rice, are you kidding? We'd love to. So we rode our bikes on the tarmac. This is obviously pre 9-11. And we laid him down. And up in the distance, we heard the engines of a plane buzzing towards us and the squeak of the tires as the plane landed. The steps came down and out walked Elvis Presley, larger than life. It was comeback special Elvis and he was in great shape. He was the Richard Nixon drug advisor. He waited for us to come to him. Rock star cool handbook rule number one. Wait for fans to come to you and act like it's business as usual. He had it down pat. He smiled the most charismatic smile I'd ever seen. Even in that bright desert sunshine, his grin was a thousand watts. Then he looked at us and he said, Sounds like you kids been a running. And I said, yeah, to catch you, Elvis. And he picked me up in the air and swung me round and round and round. He put me on his shoulders, set me down, tousled my hair. He gave me his autograph on a piece of paper he casually ripped out of a notebook he was holding. It was 1969, and he was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Now here I am, a growing up boy. At home on the 1st of July Staring out at the ocean And the fireworks in the sky I miss my friends who aren't around The ones who passed away Oh well, I'm feeling kind of grateful here On Canada Day We talk Hollywood Baseball in the car The voice of Tom Cheek Man, it would travel really far Tom Cheek, what? He was the voice of the Toronto Blue Jays He's dead now But he made this iconic call When Joe Carter was up And the Blue Jays were trying to repeat As World Series champions In 1993 And as Joe Carter stood at the plate Tom Cheek said Joe is having trouble trying to lay off that pitch low to the outside part of the plate, and he just went after one. And then Joe Carter does the unspeakable. He hits a walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth inning, and the Blue Jays repeat as World Series champions. And as Joe Carter's foot touches second base, Tom Cheek says what you could never plan. He says, touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. One of the coolest calls ever. I think it sounded just like this. I think it did. Joe has had his moments trying to lay off that ball low to the outside part of the plate, and he just went after one. Two balls and two strikes on it. Here's the pitch on the way. A swing and a belt. Left field. Way back. Blue Jays win it. The Blue Jays are World Series champions as Joe Carter hits a three-run home run. In the ninth inning, and the Blue Jays have repeated as World Series champions. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. We talk Hollywood and baseball in the car. The voice of Tom Cheek. Man, it would travel really far. I get allergies and asthma in the yard And no one ever told me growing up would be so hard Touch them all, Joe
You know what I wish? I wish I knew somebody who could do an imitation of Christopher Walken. Stick to your head. <laughs> Whoa. Steve, come on, young man. You don't just jump in. No, I'm not ready. I gotta, I gotta, I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it on the show. I'm not doing it on the show. I like how you just refused to do it. <laughs>